Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to my drive-by. It's 63 degrees, low cold today. Uh, I am in uh, I-75 going northbound, and I'm going towards Kissimmee, Florida, which is, um, you get up in the split where the 75 and I-4 is, you go towards Ocala northbound, and then cut over um, Kissimmee, Florida. I've got another 80 miles to drive. I'll get there about 6.30. It's about 5 o'clock now. Um, yeah, I just uh, wanted to bring up a few things here. Uh, it's um, January 16th. Actually, January uh, 15th today, right? I'm going to get my numbers in my head all mixed up here. I don't always look at the... Yeah, yeah. yeah, January 15th, 2014 right now. And I wanted to bring up a few things. I wanted to bring up uh, investments. Uh, and this is, you know, since it's a gun channel and I have some other stuff on there. Um, really, you know, guns are good investments uh, over, the, over the course of time. Because, you know, uh, guns don't change. You know, they, they don't change much. So they're pretty a static item. It's not like if you go and buy a uh, friggin' uh, car, you know, that depreciates. Or if you buy a computer, you know, every few months it goes down because new technology is out. Guns, you know, pretty much remain the same, pretty much. Uh, if you buy a, you know, Smith & Wesson 500, and as long as you get it at a reasonable price, you know, I mean, you know, you could probably get pretty much what you paid out of that gun. Uh, a Desert Eagle, you'll actually maybe make a little bit more money. You know, so a lot of different guns, in the long run, they're gonna they're gonna be worth kind of what you paid for them. Granted, everything depreciates. If you buy a brand new gun, which has got the most fluff into it, it's the most overpriced you'll probably lose a certain amount of money uh, when you resell that because nobody's going to want to pay you for that gun when it would be new. But if you buy a used gun, it's in fairly good shape. So let's say you go out and buy a Smith & Wesson 500 4-inch barrel and you get that gun for, um, oh, let's say you buy it at a gun dealer for $1,150. Well, chances are when you sell it, you'll probably get $950, $900 for that gun. So you should really try to buy that gun used for $9,950. And then that gun will probably always remain that value. Uh, granted, you always can't because a lot of times you might not be able to find the gun, so you're forced to go to the dealership. And uh, it's tough. I, I really, when you're going to buy a gun, if you have places like online classifieds and used places where you can buy it in your state, where it's legal to buy it like that, I would probably um, get your gun like that. See if you can get a, a discount on it. You'll save a few hundred bucks, plus you won't have tax and everything involved in it and everything else on it. So you'll actually get the gun pretty, pretty much what it's worth. And then you can sell it always for pretty much the same price that you bought it for because you'll be able to get rid of it for the price and more people would want to buy it. Now there is some guns that you actually appreciate value too. Or uh, if you do some modifications, customize a little, you can get more money out of them, definitely. But um, that's neither there here nor there. But uh, you know, I wanted to bring that up. And you have to really be careful if you do get a gun and you, uh, you know, modify it and optimize it and customize it. You may not get what you spent on that thing customizing it if it's just a basic gun. A lot of people may not want to spend that. Now, I'll give you an example, okay? This is just the top to top of my head, okay? okay. You can buy, okay, an FNP 45 Tactical or an FNX 45 Tactical, both guns. Now, they don't make the FNP 45 Tactical anymore, but they do make the FNX uh, Tactical, okay? Now, an FNX Tactical or an FNP 45 Tactical, either one of them, if you would go to the store to buy that gun, brand new, it would probably run you right at about twelve hundred to thirteen ninety nine, and that depending on what store you go to. A little bit more pricey one is probably going to be up thirteen ninety nine. A little cheaper store maybe twelve fifty something like that. But it's going to be in the thirteen thirteen fifty range by the time you get to the If you buy that gun brand new. Now, if you buy that gun used, okay, which doesn't necessarily mean it's a used gun, but and somebody bought it and didn't want it, like an online classified, an armless for the gun trade or something, or, you know, 
something like that by a private individual or even at a gun show at a private individual. If you have that in your state, you could probably get that gun for probably 1100 right up in there. If somebody really needs the money, maybe 1000 So you can get that gun pretty good. Now that gun will always pretty much be worth that price, no matter what. Okay, so now let's go over and put it this way. Okay, and, uh, you know, an FNP or an FN45 tacticals, the tactical, all the tacticals they have target sites, target suppressor sites, they're high rised, they are trigger John, they glow in the dark, they have uh, usually a target hammer, which means it's the serrated, lightened, uh, you know, 1911 type with a hole in it hammer. They have a pretty good trigger. Uh, they're going to have 15 plus 1, 45 ACP holes. They're going to be uh, removable back straps on it, uh, dual decockers. Uh, it's going to have the, uh, dual safeties, dual magazine releases, full double action. Uh, they're going to have a threaded barrel with an end cap that covers with threads on the barrel to protect it. It's going to come with uh, usually a cloth case, uh, like a tactical SOCOM case with three magazines in it, okay, and it has a plate milled into the top of the slide where you can put a RMR site, an optical site, some kind of fancy site in there, uh, red dot or whatever. Okay, so that's what it's going to have. That's going to be a pretty nice deal, okay? Okay, and you can get that gun probably for about 1100 okay. Let's say you smell up. You, really, you, you, you found it for that price. Now let's say, okay, there's another guy that has a Glock, let's see, a Glock 45, model 21, and he takes that gun and, you know, he's got it, he's like, well, you know, I want to customize it a little, so, you know, maybe he gets um, uh, an extra grip for it, you know, adds a grip on it, uh, a trigger kit, you know, which is like 170 bucks, he throws on uh, a different uh, lighter weight connector, uh, titanium, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's uh, titanium striker, uh, you know, uh, throws on uh, some chrome accents, and he customizes, let's say he spends, like, you know, it's easy to spend, base price probably of like a 21 is probably like 550 up there, even used, probably 525, they're not giving them away, so you, you know, and then you customize it and spend another at least five or six hundred you know, dollars on that gun. Okay, once you spend that five or six hundred on the gun, now you've got close to a thousand, maybe eleven hundred into the gun. And depends on how much more you're going to do. If you're going to do fluting and custom things and put a threaded barrel, I mean, you could spend fifteen, you could spend two, but you're going to have that amount of money into that gun. So let's say you spend that on that gun. Now you have eleven hundred. And the gun itself, now look at used values. You'd be hard pressed to get that price out of that gun if you ever sold it, uh, because basically it's a Glock. I mean, nothing against Glocks. Glocks are great guns. If you get it, you do all that customizing. It's probably not a gun that you're going to want to play in to sell. But you know, uh, versus you know the FNX or the Tacticals, what they have in them for the price really blows the Glocks out of the water. So you know, uh, you have to really think about it. If you're going to get the gun to keep it, that's fine. But if you're going to get it and eventually maybe want to sell that gun or get rid of it, you know, uh, you have to weigh those numbers. But it is a good investment. Guns are good investments. Uh, they are not. Everybody's not going to buy one. Okay, so it's not a uh, where everybody even could own one in certain states. But in you know whatever state you're in, if you're in a gun-friendly state, then you should be able to. Um, you know, uh, pick one of those up. But I wanted to bring that uh, and, and, and like kind of let you guys know and kind of bring that, you know, just just uh, you know, food for thought and uh, just just my my thought about it, you know, on the uh, the value of them. So when when you're picking a gun, if it's for carry, something you may not want to sell later, fine if you customize it. But if you're thinking of customizing, try to get one already done that holds its value a little bit better. Uh, there's nothing worse than spending, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a gun only to send, sell it for 50% of what you paid because you customized it and somebody don't like the way it looks. And there's certain factories that customize them too, and I know that. But sometimes you'll be hard-pressed to get that money out of it. I mean, myself, 
I, it, for me to justify spending twelve, thirteen hundred on a Glock, I'd be hard pressed. There's many other guns that are many, very much better and have a lot more features than the, um, you know, that gun. But uh, I'm not just talking about Glocks. I'm talking about everything. But Glocks especially because people customize them a lot. There's a great aftermarket uh, for those to customize them. But thanks a lot. You know, let me know what you think. Um, on my video, just just bringing up these questions about it and concerns about, you know, um, and have a great day. I'm right now on the uh, split here for the I-4. I'll be jumping off towards Orlando. I got another 73 miles to Kissimmee. Um, should be rolling in there about 6.33. A lot of traffic today, uh, especially on this split. It always is a massive amount of traffic up here. But thanks a lot, guys, for tuning in to my drive-by. And uh, I appreciate your time. And hopefully you like these drive-bys. You know, I, I just try to express some opinions that I have. Uh, you know, take them with a grain of salt. You know, you may, you know, you may agree with me or not. Uh, you know, post if you do or if you don't. That's fine. That's America. Have a great day, guys, and uh, God bless. Thank you.